Hello Internet, this is Oscar Release, this time looking at generalized Boone's method for solving systems of nonlinear equations. We'll go over the background and history as well as some examples before finally showing you how to make some cool fractals. I will assume that you already have some familiarity with Boone's method for finding the root of a single equation. Check out my videos if you haven't already. As optional viewing, check out my videos on fixed point iteration for systems of equations as well as generalized Aiken Stephenson method. As a reminder, when solving a system of equations, it could be linear or nonlinear. This video will focus on nonlinear systems, assuming you have as many equations as you do unknowns. We'll use again the example from my earlier videos, using x squared minus y equal to 1 and x minus y squared equal to negative 1, which has these four solutions. Our first step is to write it in terms of 0. We'll call this system f. Let's take the point 1, 1 and evaluate it at f, giving a result of negative 1, 1. Think of f as a transformation onto some input to give you some output. The points that we want are these, where, when plugged into f, give a transformation of 0. Going back to this example from earlier, if we make a small change to 1, 1, going a little to the right in the x direction, this gives us that transformation. If we instead change a little to upwards in the y direction, it gives us this transformation. What we would really like is a way to identify how a change in the input changes our output. For that, we're going to need f prime, which requires taking partial derivatives of every function in f against every variable in f. Don't worry if you're not too sure how to do this, I'll show you a trick in later on in the video. We usually call this the Jacobian. I've taken the liberty of doing the partial derivatives for you. We'll then want to evaluate it at 1, 1. Give the matrix 2, minus 1, 1, minus 2. If we take our Jacobian and multiply it by our small delta of 0 0.10, it gives us an output of about 0 0.2, 0 0.1. What does that mean? Well, if we plug that in to our change in the function, this addition is just about accurate. The same is true about our change in y, giving that answer. Visualize it looks something like this. Note this isn't exact, that's because the larger your change away from 1, 1, the less accurate the Jacobian will be around those points. For more context, let's look to historical development of the newton raphson method by Yipma and Thomas Simpson and Newton's method of approximation and enduring myth by Kollerstrom, both of whom cite essays on several curious and useful subjects in speculative and mixed mathematics by Thomas Simpson. Simpson describes a new method for the solution of equations in numbers when only one equation is given and the quantity x to be determined. Take the fluxion of the equation, be it what it will, supposing x, the unknown, to be the variable quantity, having divided the whole by x dot, let the quotient be represented by a. Estimate the value of x pretty near the truth, substituting the same in the equation and also in the value of a, and let the error or resulting number in the former be divided by the numerical value of a and the quotient be subtracted from the said former value of x. And from thence will arise a new value of that quantity much nearer to the truth than the former, wherewith proceeding as before, another new value may be had, and so another, etc., till we arrive to any degree of accuracy desired. What Simpson is describing here is Noon's method, represented in modern terms like this. Itma writes, this is the first formulation of the iterative method for general nonlinear equations based on the use of lexionic calculus. This significant contribution by Simpson received little recognition. The formulation of the method using the now familiar f prime calculus notation was published by Lagrange in 1798. But what does this have to do with solving systems? For that, we'll need to turn the page. Simpson describes when there are two equations given and as many quantities x and y to be determined. I'll spare you the details. Itma writes, Simpson here is describing the technique now generally referred to as Newton's method for systems of nonlinear equations restricted to the case of two such equations. In modern terms, x sub i plus 1 is equal to x sub i minus d sub i, where d is the solution of the system of linear equations, this equation, 
in which f prime is the Jacobian matrix of f evaluated at x sub i. Let's use this knowledge on our example. Let's use our equation for d, setting up this linear system and plugging in 1 and 1. We can then solve it using any linear system solver, like Gauss Jordan, Simpson used Kramer's rule. This leaves us with the value of negative 1, negative 1. Note what D is telling us is what change to the input results in a change to the output. Here, if we added that negative 1, negative 1 to our input for F, this doesn't help us a lot, but we can instead subtract it, which should give us an output of around 0. This is where we get our equation of X sub n minus D sub n, giving our new value for X sub n plus 1. As our example, starting with the point 1, 1, subtracting our value for d gives us an answer of 2, 2, plotted right there. This value, x1, is indeed closer to our solution, but when we plug it in to our function for f, the transformation isn't all that much closer. We can instead, though, repeat the process by plugging in 2, 2 into our Jacobian. Using, again, our equation for d, plugging everything in, gives us this linear system, which we saw using any linear system solver, giving a value for d of one third, one third. Plug that into our equation for x, and we get a new value of 5 thirds, 5 thirds. Plot it right there to give us our value for x2. Plugging x2 into our equation for f gives us a transformation of around zero. We'll stop iterating once our norm for the change in step size becomes less than some epsilon, which is also coincidentally the value for d, or we get close enough in our function call at that point, or we reach a maximum number of iterations. Let's look at a numerical example using our same function and Jacobian, but starting from point 1, 2, and ending with an epsilon of 10 to the minus 6. We'll need x, f at that point, j at that point, and d. Using this equation for x, and this equation for d. It converges to a solution in about four iterations. Let's take a closer look at these two equations. If we're using MATLAB or GNU Octa, for example, we can use the backslash operator to rewrite our value for d like this, which simplifies our equation to eliminate a d variable. It still does solve a linear system each iteration. We could instead multiply both sides of our d equation with the inverse Jacobian, resulting in the identity simplified to this. Now we can use substitution to come up with this form for Newton's method. This does require now to compute an inverse each iteration, or does it? If you're using MATLAB or GNU Octave, you can use symbolic programming to define variables for x and y as well as a function f. Here I'm using the example from the rest of the video, but you can make any function f. Then have it compute the Jacobian for you by calling the Jacobian function on f. You can also have it invert j for you, giving an output that looks like this. So if you're not too familiar with finding partial derivatives or don't want to do that by hand, this is a great option for you. You can even take it one step further by multiplying the inverse Jacobian times f giving you this function that takes in x and y and has no matrix multiplication whatsoever. For the next part of the video, I recommend checking out my other lesson on Newton fractals. If we apply Newton's method starting from any of these points, we know that it would convert to 1.618 for the x and 1.618 for the y. We can test some more points and all of these red dots would eventually converge to that same solution. These dots in blue would converge to the next solution, negative 1, 0. These dots would converge to 0, negative 1. And these dots in green, scattered throughout the blues and yellows, would eventually converge on our last solution. We can do this with all the points in this area to come up with this fractal, identifying the basin of convergence for each solution. The darker the color, the faster the convergence. Although if you're not interested as to which solution to converge to, but rather if it converged or not, we can create a different kind of fractal, which looks like this. 
We can also add a scalar value in front of each Newton step to then generalize this fractal even further. Like 1 half plus i over 2, giving a sort of James Cameron vibe. Here is another system of nonlinear equations of x squared plus y squared equal to 1 and x plus 2y squared equal to 1, giving this fractal. With very distinct basins of convergence. When colored only on the number of iterations, you can tell it's having a very difficult time converging on the solution of 1, 0. Scaled with an a value, we get something like this. Let me know which director you think would have made this fractal in the comments. Going back to our fractal from earlier, this was how it looks essentially in the xy plane. But as you can kind of already tell, this works with complex numbers. Here's a slice taken from the xi plane. And here's one taken from the iy plane. We can actually combine all of them. These are just three slices shown in the three dimensions, but you could take any number of slices in any axis you wanted. For some more context, let's turn back again to Hitmer's paper on the history of Newton's method. Hitmer refers to another document by Simpson called A New Treatise of Fluxions with these examples. To quote, In passing, it seems appropriate to note also a contribution by Simpson to the closely related problem of multivariable constraint optimization. Simpson gives what may be the first example of maximizing a function of several variables, obtaining the maximum by essentially setting the gradient of the function equal to zero. The idea of setting the gradient equal to zero combined with Newton's method to solve the resulting system of nonlinear equations is a key ingredient of many techniques for solving unconstrained optimization problems. The important takeaways of this video are that Newton's method can be generalized to solve systems of nonlinear equations with a quadratic order of convergence there are also many attributions by Thomas Simpson, but the history of Newton's method probably requires its own video. The method also needs the Jacobian, which means partial derivatives, but you can use symbolic programming to help you out. Note the two versions of Newton's method, either solving a system or taking the inverse of the Jacobian, the choice is up to you. There are other methods that avoid using the Jacobian, but those require their own videos. You can also use Newton's method to create fractals. The code that I wrote, as well as the images I created, will be hosted on GitHub. As always, thank you for watching. For more about the Jacobian, I recommend checking out 3 Blue 1 Brown's video series on Khan Academy. Link will be in the description and as a title card on the end screen. Please let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments below. And again, thank you for watching.